we now have 15 minutes for questions. And if that sounds like a short amount of time to you, let me just mention that it's the amount of time in which Lucas said we could all start a company in Estonia. Um, probably straight off of our cell phones while we're sitting here on the panel. So while you're answering, I'm gonna, gonna get busy um, with that. Let me, let me first of all uh, offer the prerogative to the panel to ask the first question. Are there any things you heard from the other presentations that you would at, like to ask your uh, fellow panelists about or perhaps inquire uh, for further information? Uh, for the question, for, yes, I'd like to ask to the colleague from France, what is the expectation? We know that France is a very interesting country in terms of the way it uh, tries to envisage these questions of uh, uh, e government and everything that is connected. And I know that uh, recently you have uh, launched a new program on all these questions. How do you think that will be the capacity of the French society and the French companies to accept this new kind of strategy? Uh, you're asking me the, the capacity for the French to, uh, yes, yes. to go to, to use this new technology. Uh, as, as we said this morning, uh, we are thinking the digital so that it can be used really easy, in an easy way. We don't want to, uh, to take uh, uh, an hour to fill uh, a form. Uh, and, uh, and we think that filling a form is the step today, but not the step further. We, we have to, to go into the uh, data exchange with API, and if, if the, the people see that it's better for them, we're sure they will, they will, they will follow us, but we have to um, we've made tests on users to, to see how they react to the, the, those new technologies. And there are two ways, two, two main uh, things to do. First is to communicate a lot of, about what we're doing because they are afraid. They, they are afraid of, about uh, how their, uh, their data are used. So we have to explain and we have to be transparent. And the second thing is we have to be secure. You have to, we have to show that we are secure. You have to be assisted by professionals so that they, they, they trust us. Yeah, over there. Yeah, thank you. Are you ready, sir? I have two very short questions. Um, uh, my name is Reinhard Posch uh, from Austria. Um, the one is for France. Uh, uh, as you uh, are, have said, you are doing technology-wise something like Facebook. Uh, my question would be, uh, how does that conform to the IDAS regulation? How does it conform to the IDAS regulation? And uh, especially, uh, how do you avoid double identities if one, for example, comes from the ministry uh, from, uh, for finance and the other one from a local authority? Uh, uh, that, that and the second question is for Ilves. Um, you mentioned PDF uh, is sort of a problem, uh, but you are certainly aware that PDF, in the meanwhile, has built in the trust list, and they are they have started this group uh, uh, how to make even visible in a PDF that it's really uh, uh, conforming with the uh, new regulation. So uh, th then you would not see any problem anymore, I suggest. Despite that, do we have any takers for a second question here? I don't see any hands from Margaret. You ready? I'm getting <laughs> trained on this. Uh, my question is uh, is for um, Jaime Casado and uh, Feather Pistana, and um, it is very simple. How did you involve the different actors in the process of building the procurement solution? 
And by the way, we'll take some questions from the back. Don't worry, I won't try to throw it all the way back there. Is there anyone in the back of the room who would like a question? Um, you're part of this conference too, so please, um, please uh, dive in. Did I see a hand there? There's a gentleman there, and he's got a microphone. Okay. Uh, thank you. My name is Gerald Lenus from the European Land Information Service. I have a question for Mr. Elvis. Um, thank you for your presentation. It's very enthusiastic. Uh, I'm wondering, at this moment, there is a lot ongoing with blockchain technology. Uh, do you envisage a cooperation between your ideas and blockchain, or do you want to be taken over by blockchain? <laughs> or you want to take over blockchain? I think, uh, by the way, to my knowledge, blockchain is a technology and not a company. Um, but I'm, maybe there's someone else out there who, uh, who feels that way. Uh, that's three questions. Who'd like to chime in? I give one minute and then I pass to Cesar to explain a better way. No, we have uh, on a uh, three months basis permanent meetings with our uh, stakeholders. We created in uh, our um, agency formal stakeholders networks. So the stakeholders for the central administration, the stakeholders for the local authorities, the stakeholders for universities, and we try to share with them lots of the situations that are connected with our programs. Specifically in the public procurement, we have a more detailed um, agenda. I will pass to Cesar to explain. Yes. Thank you. Uh, it is a process. It's never ended. So uh, we have to maintain at the, all different levels, public procurement officials, uh, public entities, economic operators, the involvement in these kinds of networks to explain the process, to explain the strategy, to explain why public contracts are going to be different than they are today, to explain why we have more functionality available on the e-platform, for example, what we want from interoperability, because there's a lot of uh, fear from that. Uh, is it going to be cross-national, so all the other companies are going to get more stake on my market? All the fears that, that it are natural to do that. So we are quite concerned with that, and we try to address their, the, those fears. And at the different levels, the public procurement officials need some kind of information, the contracting authorities need other kinds of information, and the economic operators have to have other uh, levels of uh, information. But the main message is never closed, and sometimes we think that everybody is in line with the vision, and something <coughs> happens, and we have to go back and do that again. Thank you. So the question was, how does France Connect work with AIDAS? So in fact, when you, when you will push the French Connect button, you will see all the identity <laughs> providers. And we can imagine that we will see uh, um, a European flag so that you can push on it and then go on your country and select your way to, to connect, for example, with your um, electronic identity card, and just connect on, the, on your, web, your usual website, and then the identity will come back into France Connect, and then we will give it to the service provider. Uh, I didn't talk about the, the level, the different levels of uh, authentication, because it's a bit, uh, but we take it in, um, uh, we, we have to think of it, so uh, we, we are managing them, but in France Connect, they are all only trusted identities. The, just the authentication uh, level can change, so you can use a low level uh, with uh, login passwords, uh, substantial, with uh, an OTP and, uh, and uh, strong or uh, with, uh, with a card. Thank you. So maybe on one question, of, to address the question of multiple identities, I mean, that's something we worry about a lot too. And I mean, frankly, what our citizens would all love to do is use their Facebook or Google identities for our services. So if we think about the spirit to give the people what they want, that's really one of the questions we should be asking ourselves. Um, on the question of PDFs, um, I, 
we can have long dis philosophical discussions about PDFs and, um, and binary container formats, and there's a long list of things you can't do with PDFs. Um, we've had a minor issue with PDFs, which is that they, they take the time stamping from the local machine instead of from a server. Um, that's changed, and I, and, I, and I know that they've gotten a lot better at that. Um, so I know that our people don't like PDFs. I've been, as Paul mentioned, in Brussels for two years, so I'm rusty on a few details, and uh, maybe we can talk about that afterwards. Um, on the question of the blockchain, um, we, I mean, one of the big problems we have right now is we have signatures that are 10 years old that were given with 1024-bit um, RSA keys, and you know the, crypt the cryptopocalypse means that those are fair. If not already, then will fairly soon not really be um, signatures we should rely on. So what we're doing right now for public documents is basically putting a second blockchain sort of timestamp signature on them. Um, to ensure their long-term validity. So, I mean, in general, we try to use blockchain technologies where we can. We have a number of companies doing interesting things with that. Um, and there's always the open question of what the future technology for the signatures is. I mean, right now we're using PKI. Uh, Two-factor PKI is just about everyone else's, but that is sort of running into it's, um, well, that, that will probably run out in the next five to 10 years. So we're, we're technologically, we're looking at at all alternatives, and there's a very good chance that whatever we go with in the long run has a blockchain component to it. All right, we have, we have time if we're brief, and so far we've been exceedingly good with time for one more round of questions. Are there any questions? Um, yes, the lady there. How are you at catching? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sir, Sir Gay, could you give this to please? Thank you very much. No, I'm not good at rugby, sorry. <laughs> um, thanks for all the presentations. Thanks for all the countries' participation. Okay, is that better? Ah, sorry, my name is Mercedes Sanchez, and I work at KPMG EU office here in Brussels. So I will thank again all for the presentations, the business case, or the, the country cases, and as well for the chimney presentation this morning. I have two questions, one quite uh, operational and another maybe more open and macro. The first one is we heard earlier on the, um, the presentation from Italy and now we have heard the France Connect presentation. I see similarities so I just wonder where the interoperability could have played there better uh, on those two experiences. The second question, a little bit more macro and more open, um, maybe on the reverse or on an earlier question uh, uh, earlier on is the strategy adopted, which I understand and which I, I, I support in a way, as being the building blocks approach. So we go uh, little by little, uh, focus point or issue um, by issue. Um, what do we need to make it happen one day for the other? What is the, the, the final push we are needing? Uh, if we all are convinced and we know that there also is a benefit for the competitiveness and the future of Europe, what is still missing? Um, uh, please don't tell me that it's only political uh, will. Uh, um, I know maybe the question is too open, but I just want to put it on the table. And I know it goes exactly in the same direction of what was um, asked earlier on. Do we need a big crash to be, uh, to be reactive? Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Adam Malorup. Um, I'm from the Danish Ministry of Finance from the Digitization Agency. Uh, I'm working with, mainly with, uh, with base registries um, at the moment. I just uh, have this thought that I would like the panel's reflections on um, in terms of, um, well, perhaps like closing the loop back to the morning where we have uh, Mr. Sorinho, um, who mentioned that interoperability was at the uh, heart of European policy. and. Uh, I believe that right. Well, these days, like uh, everybody who reads the news, see that the concept of borders uh, has never had such a, an importance in European politics uh, as it has um, today. So, um, one of these, one of the things that this comes back to is the concept about how you establish trust across administrations, in terms of the uh, administrative procedures underlying, in terms of the trust to the capacity of the administrations to actually support um, 
the, uh, the, the electronic, uh, the exploitation of the electronic opportunities that we can facilitate. So I just want the, the reflections of the panels of the, how do you go about this issue of trust across the administrations? Okay, thank you, and if it's not too much, I'm going to add a question as well before we come back to you for the last time, which is are there any messages you'd like to leave with the room here today? And I make you the same offer I made uh, the Vice President and the Director General this morning, which is, uh, apart from just sitting here and answering questions, are there any challenges you'd like uh, to make and leave with the room? Uh, Jaime, you're first. Well, I try to give one minute message. I think that this agenda that we are trying to construct, this interoperability agenda, is very important. It's a very demanding stakeholding participation agenda. We think that it's an, a strategic interoperability agenda. It's a semantic interoperability agenda, but it's also a technical agenda. So I think it's very important to sustain the participation of the stakeholders. This is something we are doing in Portugal because uh, even if we have the best strategies, if we don't communicate them to the, our stakeholders, it will be difficult. So this is a message I would like to, to pass. Yes, um, just to re reinforce that, that uh, we are dealing with complex, very complex problems. So a lot of time we don't know the answer or don't have all the pieces to have a good solution. So we have to trust each other to say that at first. I don't know how to solve all the problems. And, uh, and uh, it is not easy to say that in front of 400 people or 500 or whatever, and uh, try to open to other administrations in this, my country or other country and say that. So that, that's the first thing that I would like to leave as a challenge, is the ability to say, I need help, I want to integrate with someone, and I don't have the solution for, for that. Um, and of course, uh, we have to, I think that the solution to get results delivered by blocks is very interesting because we th see things happening. And f in my case, that I came from the private sector, it's very important to, to have that, to, 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 to understand that uh, after a few period of time, I am able to say, well, this happened in this, in this project. Uh, so for me, I answered the question about well, the Italian approach and our approach, which, in fact, uh, to my opinion, is really not the same, because we've already tried to put a kind of catalog of services uh, central with all the services, but it's too difficult with the politics. It's uh, it doesn't work. We we didn't arrive. Uh, we we it, did, it didn't work. So with France Connect, we changed the approach saying, okay, the services are where they are, and even if uh, a CTO, two CTOs have the same, service, the same services, but call it with two different names, why not? That's, uh, they know their users, they have to, to do with them. But to, sim to simplify the life of the users, they can connect on each of the, uh, this website in one way using the Friends Connect button. So the, the Friends Connect button can be found not only in one website that centralize everything, but on every website so that you can connect everywhere on the, uh, in the same way. So I will, I will make a challenge in, in part in response to the colleague from KPMG. No more interoperability conferences. <laughs> what I mean by that what I mean by that is, you know, we've done a lot of work now and it's no longer our baby. What we need is we need the people who are responsible for the services directive, who are responsible for environmental rules across borders, who are responsible for, you name it, in the EU acquis to actually go sit together in their, com in their particular silos and say, well, we have this toolbox, we have these building blocks, what can we do about it now? Um, and the challenge to the e-government action plan that's coming out right now is to move from, oh, we've got these really nice components and let's keep on building these components and these components are so important, to here is the economic impact of doing something using these components for the services directive in the internal market. Here is the impact for public health and e-health. Here is the impact for its, you know, public safety and security. And 
And you know, the next time we have, I mean, okay, we, we need to have interoperability conferences, but really the, that's for our, our community to make sure we're still doing a job maintaining this and updating it. It should be much less important than the outcome related conferences. And really quickly on the trust, um, I agree it's a problem. On the other hand, um, the old system of trust, which was, you know, agency from another country sends you a letter, much less trust. So I'd say this gives us a lot more transparency and verifiability, and we should focus on building that into the services so it's not just blind trust of mutual recognition. Okay, thank you.